Look at the pictures of John Henry as I display them. Be ready to retell the events if called upon. Pay close attention to the pictures. How do these pictures help you understand the main character, the setting, the problem, and the solution? Some days later, they heard an unfamiliar clatter. Down the tunnel came a group of men with a strange machine. This is a steam drill. It can drill more holes faster than any six men combined. A new man bragged, who can beat that? John Henry stepped forward, try me. He and Little Bill took their workplaces. John Henry gripped the hammer. Little Bill clutched his steel drill. Check the machine, came the order. A nervous hand fell on the switch. In the dark, both sides waited for a signal to start. And then a hoarse voice counted. One, two. Three. The machine shrieked as it started. John Henry swung his hammer and a crash of steel on steel split the air. Clang, bang, clang. The drill got red hot in Little Bill's hand. He quickly dropped it and picked up another. Hiss, whistle, rattle. Men frantically heaved cold into the hungry, roaring engine and poured water into the steaming boiler. Whoops, clang, whoops, bang. John Henry's hammer whistled as he swung it. Chug, chug, clatter, rattled the machine. Hours after hours raced by. The machine was ahead. Hand me that 20 pound hammer, little Bill. Harder and faster crashed the hammer. Great chunks of rock fell as John Henry ripped holes after holes into the tunnel wall. The machine rattled and whistled and drilled even faster. Friends doused John Henry and little Bill with cold water to keep them going. Here's John Henry being doused with water. Here is a picture of John Henry as he picks the hammer up again. Then John Henry took a deep breath, picked up two sledgehammers, and sang, 
Ain't no hammer strike such fire, strike like lightning, Lord, and I won't tire. Hammers like this, Lord, there's never been. I'll keep swinging them, Lord, until we win. John Henry swung both mighty hammers faster and faster. He moved so fast that the men could see only a blur and sparks from his striking hammer. His strokes rang out like great heartbeats. At the other side of the tunnel, the machine shrieked, groaned, and rattled, and drilled. Then all at once, it shook, and it shuddered, and it wheezed, and stopped. Frantically, men worked to get it going again, but they couldn't. It had collapsed. John Henry's hammering still rang and echoed through the tunnels with a strong and steady beat. Suddenly, there was a great crash. Light streamed into the dark tunnel. John Henry had broken through. Wild cries of joy burst from the men. Still holding one of his hammers, John Henry stepped out into the glowing light of a dying day. It was the last step he ever took. Even the great heart of John Henry could not bear the strain of this last task. John Henry died with his hammer in his hand. If you listen to the locomotive roaring through the tunnel and across the land, you'll hear them singing, singing of that great steel driving man, John Henry. Listen, listen. And this is a picture of John Henry as he takes his last steps before he dies. Think about all the gist for this section of the text. What happened and what important information did the author share? Take a moment to think about the gist of this section. The gist of this section is that a steam drill was a problem for the men working in the tunnel. It could work faster than six men so the men would lose their jobs. John Henry steps forward to challenge the steam drill. The solution comes when John Henry works faster and beats the drill. Then the strain of working harder than a machine leads to John Henry's death in the end. The objective for this section of the text is to recount the details of these pages. Now we will look at the think step to help us to recount the details of this section. 